uh, when it came out that you were going to ESPN, I wrote a column. I was surprised by the negative reaction. Now, how much was negative compared to how much was positive? You would know that better than me, but I know you maybe were also taken a little bit of back by it. Now, I have my theory on it, which I'll get into, but tell me just what that experience was for you when it became announced that you were going to ESPN in the fall. I appreciated you writing that. And uh, I think my guy Ty Schmidt saw it first and sent it in. It was like, hey, here's a guy at least, you know, <laughs> speaking with some reason and thought. And I understand um, that everything you do, every decision I do with our show is going to get some drawback, no matter what it is. When I decided to start doing WWE every single week, which has been a lifelong dream of mine and getting an opportunity to do it has been so cool. And everybody over there, I fucking love. I mean, it is it is the world that I was probably put on this earth to be in. If I could go back and not have a rocket of a leg, I would have been a professional wrestler and hopefully would have been able to make it in WWE a long time ago. And that's just how my life would have been. But whenever I decided that, you know, I am going to try to make my show work and be a part of WWE, there was people that were naturally mad because they thought the show was going to change because I was going to uh, spend some of my attention on the WWE. And at that moment, I was so confused. I'm like, man, this is completely separate from the thing, from the show. You're like completely different operation. And it was at that moment I realized like, our show is something that people really enjoy. Our show stinks, okay? We know that. We understand that. But there's a lot of people that are incredibly cool and incredibly passionate, and they hang out with us every single afternoon. So I think any change I make, I had to learn through trials and errors that there's going to be people that are upset with it because they're scared they're going to lose the thing that they get to hang out with. And I am honored that that is how they view our show. But my big takeaway after this decision is like a lot of our people have been with us for a long time. And a lot of decisions I've made, we've been through this a couple of different times where it's like, hey, the show is going to remain the show, though. And I would like a little bit more faith almost in the fact that we understand who we are, we understand what we are, and we wouldn't want to change it for anybody because that'd be bad business and it'd be bad because we can't make a better show. We are a bunch of doofuses that do what we do and it just so happens to work. So I didn't expect it to be as big of a drawback as it was. I, I knew that there would be some people because there's probably new fans of the show and new viewers of the show who hadn't been through some of the, these types of situations before with our program, but the, it was big. You're right. And it was positive. There's a lot of people incredibly happy for us. There's a lot of people that were like, you know, excited about what this means for the future of things. And a lot of our people were, Hey, next step, next evolution of the show. This is cool. But I did not expect the amount of people that were negative about it before even knowing what it was. And I, I know that it comes from a place of passion. So I'm honored about it, but it was alarming, Jimmy. It was alarming. <laughs> I did not, I did not expect that many shots to the shins from my, my own people almost, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, a few things, because as I wrote, I would have thought your people would have had more faith and trust in you because you have navigated this post-NFL career in a brilliant way. So there should be some trust there. Also, you're not going to take your show and bring it anywhere and have it be changed when it's such a success. What I learned after writing that column, because when I wrote the column, um, and if someone's listening who doesn't know, Pat, it was announced he was going to ESPN. And I, there was a lot of stuff on social media about like, the show's going to change, the show's going to change. And sell that, out, and sell out, sell out, sell, sell out. Sell out. And my yes. column was like, I would have thought Pat's people would have trusted him a little more. What I learned after the column got posted is that I don't think this was about you. I think this was about ESPN. Like, you know how people say there's Trump derangement syndrome? There's ESPN derangement syndrome out there. Because what I got on Twitter, what, I, like just one example, someone wrote into me and they go, uh, off my column, ESPN ruins everyone they sign. Now, I usually don't engage with people on Twitter because it's just not worth it. But I cover this for a living and I was trying to think like, okay, let me think where this has happened. Couldn't think of anything. So I wrote back to the person. I just said, can you give me one name, two names, just anyone, just give me someone. And then the person wrote back, of course, didn't have any names and just wrote something about liberal, woke, ESPN, politics, blah, 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 which has nothing to do with your show. So if you want to take any positives of it, I think once you get to ESPN and people see your shows the same, everything will be fine. But I think people are more spooked about ESPN than your show changing, which Again, I've gone through this over the years. The theory that ESPN is covering politics is also nonsense. Like Scott Van Pelt's not breaking down the Ukraine war. PTI isn't talking about, you know, inflation. Like it's a little over dramatized like ESPN and the politics. And I think you got caught up in that. That's my theory. 
Yeah, I think so. And, and obviously how ESPN is viewed by what they choose to focus on and not focus on, I think a lot of people get upset about because I think sports are naturally a unifier. You know, I think sports are naturally a celebration. So I think there's a lot of people that potentially get scared from like, oh, they're going to all of a sudden start focusing on things like debating things because I think debates bring a natural divide, right? Because you're obviously debating. So you got to be on one side or on another side. So I think that type of stuff, the decision to talk about things, not every day, but I think politics cer certainly got its way into ESPN's coverage when the whole world became political. And I, I think a weapon for us is that I am not smart enough to get into politics. And also nobody is thinking to themselves, hey, you know what? How does Pat McAfee feel about insert actually real thing in the mm. world? So for us, I've always like just stayed in the world that we know, the world that we understand. But also I've always viewed sports as a unifier. I've made my best friends in sports. I've had my best moments in sports. I've met people and learned so much about life through sports. So I think people are just scared that ESPN will change the fact that we're no longer celebrating sports. We're more so trying to cut sports down. And that's kind of what I read. It, to your point, from a lot of the takeaway after I was telling people, like, no, oh, can you have a little bit more faith? Like, we're not going to change. Or like, naturally, it's going to change because you're going to have to start doing this, and you're going to have to start doing top fives, and you're going to have to start debating things, mm -hmm. and you have to start picking this code and this. And it's like, automatically, all those things potentially drive a little separation. But we are not talented to do that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not talented to stand on a table for something I don't believe in, which is potentially what some sports media has become. For us, it's just like, let's talk. Let's learn about these people. I'm not going to chastise anybody for how they feel, but I feel like the more we learn about these sports stars, the better for the sports media world. So that's all we're well, trying to do. Right. Just enjoy and, sport. Well, that's a, so it surprised me that people thought you would move your show and change it. And it also surprised me that people would think that ESPN would want to pay you a lot of money and then change your show. Like none of it made sense, but I guess maybe these, you know, I'm, I'm in the sports media world. So maybe I know it a little better than the average Joe fan, but it wouldn't have made sense from either standpoint to do that. So, but let me, let me give you just some quick specific questions about the move that I know people have questions about. And we'll, you know, one question people had, a lot of people had your current show um, on YouTube. You have a lot of non ESPN people on Shams, Ian Rappaport, et cetera. People want to know, will those people still be on your show when it goes to ESPN or is ESPN going to say, no, you can only have Adam Schefter and Woj. Yeah, I've never been told that I can only have ESPN people on my show. That was never uh, even broached by them or by us. Ian is a part of our crew. Like Ian Rappaport has been a part of our crew for a long time. I do believe that we will certainly develop a relationship with Schefter as well. And why wouldn't we, especially as a show that covers the NFL as we have, but our people will remain our people. That's kind of how the entire thing is set up, but we are very open to meeting and mingling and hopefully putting over ESPN talent that they have on the roster. And that was a big part of why we were going as well, because I got sick of booking the show. I mean, I'm booking the show, text messaging people every single morning. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't like doing that. I hate doing that. I feel like I'm impeding on people's time. I'm like, if I was on the other end of this, I would tell this guy, oh yeah, I have nothing else to do, but talk about this in the middle of it. So like us going to their network and all the incredibly talented people they have on staff and on payroll that are ready to come on the program, massive part of going to ESPN. So we are very excited to build relationships with people in the basketball world from ESPN and the baseball world in the college lacrosse world. If we start talking about that, like they have experts from all fields that we're excited to have, but our people will remain our people as well. We're just trying to make the best possible show as we can.